At the Hancock Shaker Village in far western Massachusetts, they have always kept things simple and clean. It's a museum now where visitors can see classic furniture designed centuries ago by the Shakers. The lines of the furniture are as clean as the rooms it inhabits. Leslie Hertzberg is the curator. They weren't thinking of it as being beautiful, but they were thinking of it as being functional, that streamlined, simple, what we now say as beautiful design is a they result. They didn't mean for it to be beautiful? They didn't. It's beautiful to our eyes, but they wouldn't have referred to it as beautiful. These no-frills, no-flourishes chairs may be the best-known legacy of Shaker design. The Shakers came to the U.S. from England and established themselves as a Christian sect in the late 18th century. Their design style followed their lifestyle. It is simple and, above all, practical. This is a blanket chest made in the 1800s. What's the thing on the bottom? That is an extra drawer. The Shakers didn't like to waste space. And so if there was an additional way to use the space more efficiently, the Shakers would find it. They were an innovative group that came up with new ways to solve old problems. As is human nature, everyone wants to tip back in their chair. It's true. <laughs> it is true. And so the Shakers did the same thing. But what the Shakers figured out was in order to preserve the chair and also to preserve their floors, if you added this tiny little design element to the back posts of your chairs, you could preserve both that back post and your floor. This is brilliant. So it, 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 it swivels, if I may, mm -hmm. it swivels with the chairs. You go back. This is brilliant. Invented by the Shakers. <laughs> and now seen on most classroom chairs for kids. In their heyday in the 19th century, there were roughly 6,000 Shakers in nearly two dozen communities from Maine to Kentucky. Their founder was a woman known as Mother Anne. They lived communally, so cleanliness became, if not next to godliness, at least really close. Mother Anne once said there is no dirt in heaven. And so keeping your living quarters and your eating quarters and your work quarters clean was very important. And so that's why you have things like the shaker built-ins, so you don't have to clean on top or beneath them. In fact, a lot of shaker design evolved from the necessity to tidy up. Among other things, they invented the flat broom. And are the pegs, which you see in every shaker thing, are they, are they for hats or what? They're for almost anything. So not only could you push your, your chair under the table, you could also hang it up on your peg. And why and, would you do that? Well, if you wanted to clean underneath it, but you would often hang it upside down so that dust wouldn't gather on the seat. They brought this trestle from this lower, where it normally would have been, in this lower position. They brought it up into this upper position. Ian Ingersoll is a furniture maker in West Cornwall, Connecticut. And they brought it up to that position so that they could clean under every table every day. It's easier to get a mop under this it's easier than it to would get be a mop. if there was a trestle yes. Yes. cutting off half of the table. Right. This is the Full disclosure here, Ingersoll is my neighbor. These are the peg racks and the, and the chair. And he has spent decades studying and following shaker design. In the design world, we use the word to shakerize almost like it was a verb, meaning to simplify it to its simplest form. Ingersoll makes shaker furniture, but he also makes more contemporary pieces, frequently with a glance back at the shakers. And as a matter of fact, that aesthetic has really driven most of modern furniture design for the last 50 years. The Shaker's designs have stood the test of time and influenced furniture makers of more recent times. But time might finally be catching up with them. Since the beginning, Shakers have been celibate, so new members can be hard to come by. Mother Anne once said that once the number of shakers dwindles to how, as many as you can count on one hand that there will be a resurgence. And maybe that's still true. Where once there were 6,000 shakers, today there are just a handful living together in Maine, perhaps the last of their kind.